With the meta changing every week, it can feel impossible to know how to adapt. We do our best to keep you up to date with hundreds of matchup guides and <clears throat> a 250 plus rating guarantee on skillcap.com slash wow. And today we have a special meta update for you. Yes, you. By now, you probably encountered these three trinkets in Arena. And if you listen to what the pros are saying, they are kind of busted. But how do you know when you should be using them? And better yet, how do you counter your opponents who have them equipped? Today, we answer all your questions and we will even show you how to modify one of your add-ons to adapt to the new meta. So sit back as we show you how to adapt to the chaos of Shadowlands Season 3. Starting things off, we have the infamous Echoing Resolve PvP Trinket. We like to make predictions on this channel at the start of every season and there is one thing we can safely predict, that this trinket will be nerfed. At least, that's what we hope. Because everything that is OP eventually gets nerfed, right? Now, on first glance, this trinket seems confusing. It is in the medallion trinket slot, meaning it cannot be equipped with a normal PvP trinket or Relentless, but it increases the duration of CCs you take by 20%. So why would anyone want to use it? Well, if you read the fine print, this trinket gives a buff every time a CC or interrupt lands, which makes the user immune to the next CC or interrupt for 15 seconds. This essentially makes it into a Holy Ward and Aura Mastery combo with no internal cooldown. That's right, this trinket doesn't have an ICD, meaning it will continuously proc over and over with every other CC or interrupt. This means that certain CC combos are much more difficult to pull off. Take DB Sheep for instance. If a mage uses DB on any healer with Echoing Resolve equipped, the follow-up Polymorph will be immune. There is a workaround to this problem, which we will discuss in a bit, but for now, just keep in mind that this trinket single-handedly disrupts most CC chain from happening. But does that mean you should always play it? Well, not necessarily, but some specs and classes can reliably play it in most matchups. This isn't something we necessarily recommend, but because it acts as a holy ward, it can be an off-meta pick as a holy priest in 2v2, who already have multiple CC avoidance tools like Greater Fade, Shadow Word Death, and, well, Holy Ward itself. This can make it nearly impossible to reliably land CC on Holy Priests in very specific matchups, and can be a niche alternative if you want to experiment. But outside of experiments, it has been proven to work really well with mages and warlocks of all specs due primarily to its aura mastery effect. For the entirety of Shadowlands, Affliction and Destro Warlocks have been gated out of the top tiers, due in part to how easy they get locked down. Melee Cleaves make it almost impossible to chain important casts because of how many interrupts and micro CCs they have. Echoing Resolve is a janky workaround to this problem, and with the ability to immune disruption, Warlocks are actually able to play the game. And since Unending Resolve and Dark Pact can be used while stunned, it is much more difficult to punish Warlocks for not having a CC break. The same is true for Frost and Arcane Mages. All expansion, they have suffered the classic low tier caster problem that they actually need to cast. But with this single trinket equipped, that issue becomes much smaller. And with the ability to fall back on powerful defensives like Alter Time, Ice Block, and even regular Blink, Mages can avoid getting punished defensively from the additional 20% CC duration. In general, this trinket also works well as Human or Orc in some matchups, with a stun break and passive stun reduction partially offsetting its effect. Cephuse can also offset the increased CC duration, partially reducing its downsides. While this trinket works well for some DPS classes and one healer, it doesn't necessarily mean it should be played universally. In fact, any DPS that can't use major defensive CDs while stunned should generally avoid using this trinket, especially into really bursty setups like RMP, since you generally want to pair your medallion with defensive CDs in order to block enemy attacks. Elemental Shamans in particular already have problems defensively against RMP, and this trinket can put them at a massive disadvantage. Now, you might be asking what to do if your opponents are playing this trinket. Fortunately, there are some cheeky outplays you can make. First things first though, we highly recommend installing the latest version of Big Debuffs. This add-on has been updated by its author to include the buff from Echoing Resolve on enemy frames. This will make it much easier to see when you need to find a workaround to the trinket in case you don't notice it proc. But even before it procs, there is one thing you should consider that every CC that lands on the target will be 20% longer, including stuns and interrupts. This means you can get massive pressure into select targets when the effect isn't active because they will have no way to avoid your lockdown once the stun lands. Knowing this, you can plan your openers and mid-game setups into targets with Echoing Resolve equipped, making sure to use your stuns and burst when the trinket isn't proc'd to make your setups dramatically stronger. 
Another workaround to the trinket is knowing what CC effects cause it to proc on and off. Any CC or successful interrupt can cause the trinket to activate. Obviously, this includes effects like polymorph or kidney shot, but it can also proc off any root effect too, meaning if you use an ability like Frost Nova or even get an RNG root from Frostbite, both of these effects will cause the trinket to trigger. Interrupts will also cause the trinket to trigger, but only if they are successful, meaning if you miss your kick with the trinket deactivated, it won't proc the CC and interrupt immunity buff. But once the opponent has the trinket buff, any interrupt, regardless of whether it is successful or not, will instantly remove the proc. Kinda confusing, right? This means that a rogue, for instance, could kidney shot a target without the buff, meaning the kidney shot would be 20% longer. Then they could use a kick on the same target to remove the trinket proc even if it doesn't interrupt a cast. And after the buff gets removed, they could cheap shot again for a DR stun that will last 20% longer than usual. But even if you don't have a kick to remove its effect, you might need to get a bit creative to find ways to deal with the CC immunity. As mentioned, even root effects can cause the buff to be consumed, which includes spells like Bear Form, Wild Charge, or even Monk Disable, so be ready to use those quickly in case you need to land important CC. So just to recap, make sure to monitor big debuffs to know when the trinket is proc'd, keeping in mind that it will activate after any successful interrupt or CC, including root effects. Then, in order to remove its effect, any CC spell or interrupt, regardless of whether it actually stops a cast, will cause the buff to go away. It can be quite frustrating to deal with this at first, but we anticipate it will be nerfed eventually with some sort of internal cooldown added. Okay, next up we have another new addition to the game, the Resonator Trinket. This is a grenade type ability that is a bit of a throwback to BFA spite trinkets. It can be thrown on the ground from a 30 yard range and deals damage to all targets within a 6 yard radius after 4 seconds. This makes it exceptionally good for comps that can reliably keep targets in one place during kill setups, ideally with stuns. So obviously this means rogue mage since they can do this pretty consistently. In theory though, you could use it as any comp, but it is quite a big investment and really requires being able to isolate a single target to get hit with its effect, since the damage gets split between enemies in its blast radius. So if you aren't playing as RMP, you will probably get more value out of the other damage trinkets this season. With that in mind, you should anticipate that every RMP or its 2v2 variants will be running with Resonator. Just like Echoing Resolve, there is a simple way to track when the opponents have used their trinkets. In the description below, we've linked a weak aura that displays when someone has used their resonator in red text, with a timer indicating when it will explode. If someone on your team uses the resonator, the timer will instead be green. But regardless of whether or not you're playing with the trinket, there are a few things you can actively do to mitigate its effect. For one, just like other select AoE spells, the damage is split between targets hit, meaning you and your team can help soak the damage for each other by moving into its radius before it explodes. On top of that, any mitigation effect will reduce its total damage, and since it deals cosmic spell damage which includes holy, nature, shadow, and arcane spell schools, any spell damage immunities like cloak of shadows or anti-magic shell can completely immune its damage. And speaking of completely immuning cosmic damage, the new Aegis Trinket can also help soak up the Resonator's effect. This is a new defensive option this season which absorbs 50% of all spell damage taken until reaching a cap based on versatility, but will completely absorb cosmic damage from the Resonator Trinket. This makes it an exceptionally good option into RMP since huge damage cooldowns like Combustion can be partially soaked by activating the trinket, assuming you're able to control your character during the 3-2-1 lockdown. But all jokes aside, even outside of RMP, this is an attractive defensive choice into some key matchups. Keep in mind that many melee DPS deal a considerable amount of melee damage. Survival Hunters, Ret Paladins, Death Knights, and of course Demon Hunters all deal high magic damage. Monks, Warriors, Feral Druids, and BM Hunters deal mostly physical damage, so you probably won't get too much value in those matchups, where instead an emblem or damage trinket is likely a better option. Of course, Aegis will always be an attractive choice into Caster Cleaves, which we think might see a rise in popularity this season. And before we go, we want to know what you think about these trinkets. Should they be nerfed at all? Let us know what you would change in the comments below. But no matter what changes later this season, you can be sure to gain the rating you've always wanted by checking out skillcap.com slash wow. Last season we saw our users reach new heights, with some of them even getting gladiator for the first time. In any case, we offer a money back guarantee if you don't gain rating while actively using our website, and for prices as low as $4.99 a month, you got nothing to lose. So don't wait, unlock your true potential this season and check out skillcap.com slash wow. Alright everyone, that about wraps it up for today's guide. Let us know what you thought in the comments below. As always though, thanks for watching, see you soon.